Dear colleagues, it is a great pleasure uh, to announce the release of the new guidelines for the treatment of these lipidemias, a joint effort between uh, the European Atherosclerosis Society and the European Society of Cardiology. There are uh, a number of new things in these guidelines that uh, capture all the new information we have gathered since 2016, where the old guidelines were released. And uh, mainly what we focus is uh, in a new way of stratifying risk with new tables, and you will see in a minute. Uh, there are other data to be uh, presented uh, that have been collected, as I mentioned, in the last few years. And then a new section on some uh, factors like LPLA and inflammation. I will introduce in general the guidelines. The colleagues who will follow me will uh, uh, get more deeper into specific points. So what are uh, the new recommendations? Well, we went along uh, the lines that have been established in the previous guidelines by reiterating the central role for LDL as a causal factor in atherosclerosis, but at the same time, we took on board the most recent observations related to the lower levels of LDL and the increased risk. So we tried to suggest a further stratification that follows the original guidelines that said more intensity with more risk, but we propose some more intensive goals for the very high risk population. In addition to that, we also uh, consider the possibility of the extreme risk population, which will uh, suggest for uh, a goal that is lower than the previous ones. Indeed, 55 milligrams per deciliter. Still, the concept of percent reduction remains, and this is to ensure that everyone, independent of the starting point, non-treated LDL, will get a benefit of at least, at least one millimole reduction. There are also other points that we stress as usual with our guidelines, and those go to special population. Major emphasis has been put, of course, on the familial hypercholesterolemia as a, an example of how lipids can damage your arteries. We also have touched upon uh, the definition of uh, the adverse effect of statins, trying to reconcile the differences between what you observe in everyday practice and the data from the randomized clinical trials. So the word statin intolerance, statin adverse effects have been reca recapitulated in the guidelines and we propose newer uh, approaches. Uh, and we really try to encourage the use of the maximum possible dose of a statin. We also addressed new outcomes trials with PCSK9 inhibitors, putting them in the right perspective and uh, recognizing the benefit of a further reduction of LDL, provided that the risk is very high. And finally, just a short mention about cost effectiveness. This is not our main purpose, but we have to recognize that there are drugs that are generic, less expensive than used to be, and those have to be the starting point, also because of the plethora of data that have been collected. So going back uh, to the novelties, also the scoring system has been revised, and the score system now extends to older people. So we go up now to 70 years of age. You will appreciate that, and uh, uh, that will uh, solve, at least in part, some of the issues we have had with the relatively younger population. Of course, you will see that uh, uh, in primary prevention, the 10-year risk is going to be very high as you grow older. Then uh, there are some key messages for the risk estimation to the population that needs to be treated and the population that needs to be considered for risk estimation. And we have several indications that the risk estimations are all uh, not fully precise. So we have to consider that, and we also have to consider there may be other factors that contribute to risk that are not considered in those uh, uh, charts or algorithms that are available. To make a, a long story short, uh, here are the definitions of the very high risk. And the very high risk has been somehow restructured with people with documented atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease 
either clinical or unequivocal on imaging. Documented include uh, acute coronary syndrome, myocardial infarction or unstable angina, stable angina, revascularization of the coronaries, stroke, TIA, and also peripheral vascular disease. This is very important. It was already there in the previous guidelines, but as you know, evidence has been gathered that this population is a very high risk of subsequent events. Then uh, for diabetes mellitus, people with diabetes are considered, but uh, we uh, consider those only with organ damage to be at a, a very high risk. And then people with severe CKD with a, a, a ter below 30 milliliter per uh, minute uh, clearance for a, a, a GFR. Finally, the calculated score about 10 for a 10-year risk of fatal cardiovascular disease. Please believe, uh, understand that the fatal uh, risk of 10 means roughly 30 to 40 for total cardiovascular events. And then people with FH and cardiovascular disease or with another major risk factor such as diabetes or increased blood pressure. The other risk follows uh, and they go uh, along the lines we have established. You may well remember this core table of the previous guidelines. Uh, the structure has not changed, but has been somehow modified to divide between primary prevention and secondary prevention. And secondary prevention, all the people, is a very high risk population. And as you can see here, when you cross the risk with the uh, levels of LDL, you see that now the red part covers up to a level of LDL that is between 55 and 70 milligrams per deciliter for the secondary prevention, while for the primary prevention still that sets to the stage of between 70 and 100 milligrams per deciliter, that is 1.8 millimoles to 2.6. Here we suggest immediate intervention together with lifestyle changes. But the general spectrum has not changed, only the goals have been slightly modified. And then uh, the, what are the targets? Well, the targets is the LDL, as, you, uh, as I said, and the goals have been changed and made more intensive according to the risk. For the very high risk people, a 50% reduction is suggested and an LDL goal of uh, uh, below 50, uh, 55 milligram per deciliter. Then a recommendation for the lowering of LDL, uh, we have set the stage for a consequential approach and the consequential approach essentially goes with starting at the first site as a pillar of the therapy followed by azetamibe or combination uh, starting right away in some instances and then you may consider other approaches such as PCS K9 inhibition provided that the risk and the level of LDL are such that require this approach. Then we uh, keep also some other suggestions there for cases of statin intolerance and uh, uh, for cases where you may need some other drugs, including uh, by salt absorber inhibitors. So in conclusion, uh, this is the general overview of the guidelines. Uh, there are novelties, it's not a revolution, but it's more sharp and more intense to the concept that the risk is driving the uh, intensity of the therapy. Of course, the risk is driving the intensity of the therapy needs to have an LDL high enough to support the reduction. And this is also the other point we have. We have crossed LDL with risk, and higher the risk, lower the LDL you will be requested to achieve to obtain the maximum possible benefit in terms of reduction of atherosclerotic cardiovascular events.